The Delco maintenance-free batteries used in today's Buicks represent the current state-of-the-art in automotive battery design. However, the operating principles of these modern batteries are basically the same as when the first lead-acid battery appeared over 130 years ago. The Delco battery case is divided into cells, each containing a group of positive and negative electrodes, or plates. The plates are lead-calcium grid structures, which hold the battery's active materials. Separator envelopes prevent plates from touching. The active material in the negatively charged plates is lead. The positively charged plates contain lead dioxide. The plates are immersed in electrolyte, an electrically conductive solution of sulfuric acid, hydrogen sulfate, in water. When electrolyte contacts the active lead materials, the resulting electrochemical reaction produces a difference in potential, or voltage, between the negative and positive plates. When an electrical load is connected to the battery terminals, voltage forces the current to flow in the circuit between the plates and the battery discharges. As a battery discharges, its chemical makeup changes. Hydrogen ions in the sulfuric acid combine with oxygen from the lead dioxide positive plate to produce water. At the same time, the negative and positive plates absorb sulfur ions from the broken down acid. The lead in both plates is gradually converted to lead sulfate. Even when no load is connected, the chemical reaction between the electrolyte and the plates continues slowly and causes the battery to gradually self-discharge. The Delco Freedom Battery's sealed case design and lead calcium grid structure effectively minimize self-discharge and lengthen the battery's storage life. Typically, Self-discharge current is about 4 milliamps at an ambient temperature of 70 degrees Fahrenheit. At higher temperatures, the chemical reaction accelerates and the self-discharge rate increases. Stored batteries should be checked every three to four months. In a heavily discharged battery, the electrolyte may be converted almost entirely to water and the plates may be so sulfated that they are too similar to produce current. The most common symptoms associated with a discharged battery are, of course, failure of the engine to crank and slow cranking. Diagnosis of these conditions should always begin with a visual inspection of the battery for obvious damage, such as cracks or a loose case cover that could cause leakage. If the battery is frozen, replace it. Never attempt to test or charge a frozen battery. A small amount of electrolyte around the battery's gas vents does not necessarily mean the battery is defective. Electrolyte may have leaked from the vents due to the battery being tipped more than 45 degrees during handling. Also, some electrolyte may spew from the vents if the battery is overcharged. Without pulling or twisting the cables excessively, ensure that battery terminals and cable connectors are undamaged, clean, and properly tightened. If damage or leakage is found, check that the hold-down retainer holds the battery snugly to prevent it from moving around, and that the battery tray is sound and level. If a visual inspection reveals no obvious problems, check the Freedom Battery's built-in hydrometer. When the battery is in a 65% or higher state of charge, the specific gravity of the acid in the electrolyte causes a green ball in the temperature compensated hydrometer to float. A floating ball visible as a green dot in the hydrometer indicates sufficient charge for load testing. A clear or light yellow hydrometer indicates that the electrolyte level is below the level of the hydrometer and the state of charge cannot be determined. If the hydrometer is clear and the car has a battery related cranking complaint, replace the battery. Also, check the charging system for an overcharging condition that could cause electrolyte loss. Remember to tap the hydrometer lightly to dislodge any bubbles that may cause a false reading. A dark hydrometer indicates the battery must be charged before any further testing can be performed. If the hydrometer remains green when tapped, the battery can be load tested. Use a voltmeter to check open circuit voltage across the terminals. If the open circuit reading obtained is less than 12 volts, replace the battery.
a reading below 12 volts when the hydrometer eye is green indicates that one or more cells is not functioning correctly. If the open circuit voltage across the terminals is 12 volts or more, install side terminal adapters to ensure good connections during the load test. Connect a carbon pile load tester and voltmeter to the terminal adapters following the manufacturer's setup directions. If a battery has been in use or has just been charged, an accumulation of small hydrogen bubbles may have formed on the plates. This surface charge can cause a false load test reading. To remove any surface charge, apply a 300 ampere load from the tester for 15 seconds. After removing the surface charge, allow the battery to recover for 15 seconds. Then apply the load test amperage specified on the battery label for a further 15 seconds. When battery temperature is 70 degrees Fahrenheit or more, a load test voltage reading of 9.6 volts or higher indicates the battery is good. At colder temperatures, the battery's chemical action is slowed down and lower voltage readings are produced. Electrolyte reacts slowly to temperature changes, so battery temperature is generally the same as the ambient temperature where the battery was located for the previous few hours. With some experience, battery temperature can be estimated by feeling the sides of the case. When battery temperature is below 70 degrees Fahrenheit, refer to the chart listing minimum load test voltages. The chart appears in the know-how reference manual and all Buick service manuals. If the measured load test voltage is below the specified minimum voltage for the estimated temperature, replace the battery. If the battery is good, and the starter solenoid clicks or chatters, but the engine won't crank or crank slowly, perform a battery cable voltage drop test. Disconnect the fuel system fuse to prevent the engine from starting. Attach a voltmeter between the positive battery terminal and the starter solenoid terminal B. Observe voltage while cranking the engine for 15 to 30 seconds. If the reading obtained is above half a volt, Clean and tighten the positive cable connections and retest. If the reading is still above half a volt, replace the positive cable. Test the negative cable in a similar manner by attaching the voltmeter between the battery negative terminal and the engine block. If a reading of above half a volt is obtained during cranking, replace the negative cable. If the negative cable tests OK, remove the starter motor for further testing. When the Delco battery is less than 65% charged, the green ball sinks and the hydrometer eye appears black. The battery must be charged until the green dot is visible before it can be reliably tested. If there is an electrolyte leakage at the vents, the battery should be removed from the car for charging to avoid damage from possible spewing. Install side terminal adapters to ensure good electrical contacts. Then, Connect the charger. A commercial model with a charge rate of at least 50 amps is recommended for efficient charging times. Charging current from a charger or a car's generator restores most of the battery's energy by reversing the discharge process. The reverse current flow releases sulfur ions from the lead sulfate in the plates. These sulfates combine with hydrogen in the water to form sulfuric acid and replenish the electrolyte. Free oxygen from the water returns to the positive plate and the lead is restored to lead dioxide. The more heavily discharged the battery is, the longer it takes to restore to a usable state. To check a heavily discharged battery's general condition, use a voltmeter to measure open circuit voltage across the terminals. A meter reading below 11 volts indicates the battery is very heavily discharged and may not accept a measurable amount of charger current for some time. As we've seen, the electrolyte in a heavily discharged battery contains more water and is more resistant to charging current. Cold temperatures also slow the chemical process and reduce the rate at which the battery accepts charging current. It is strongly recommended that batteries be charged at room temperature. Adjust the charger to its highest normal charge setting for a 12 volt battery. A heavy-duty battery with a greater reserve capacity
contains more active material and may require more charging time than required for a regular battery. To estimate charging time for a completely discharged battery, divide the reserve capacity rating by the amperage output from the charger. For example, a battery with a reserve capacity rating of 90 on a 50 ampere charge rate may take just less than two hours to charge. The same battery may take nine hours to charge using a 10 ampere charge rate. Remember, even when using a charger capable of supplying 16 volts or more, a very flat battery may not even begin to accept a measurable charge current for up to four hours. On some chargers, low voltage may not activate a polarity protection circuit. Follow the manufacturer's instructions to override the circuitry. During charging, check the battery regularly to ensure that its temperature does not exceed 125 degrees Fahrenheit and there is no heavy gassing or electrolyte spewing from the vents. Gassing and spewing occur when excessive amounts of hydrogen and oxygen are produced during charging. The escaping gas is highly explosive. Continue charging until the green dot is visible in the hydrometer. Then load test the battery to ensure it is ready for service. If the complaint is that the battery becomes heavily discharged over a period of two or three days or overnight and the battery is okay, Test first for excessive drain in the car's electrical system. Today's Buicks are equipped with a growing number of electronic components that continue to draw battery current when the ignition is off. These small current drains are commonly referred to as parasitic loads. For example, a digital clock radio with tuner memory functions may impose a constant draw of between three and eight and a half milliamps. Similarly, the engine or powertrain control module typically draws two to seven milliamps. When a car is used on a regular daily basis, normal parasitic drains will not adversely affect battery life. On the other hand, an abnormal parasitic load, such as a lamp that stays on or a faulty solid state component, may drain the battery to a very low state of charge in a short time. To effectively check for excessive parasitic drain, Use the parasitic draw test switch. Connecting an ammeter alone may not reveal the cause of a drain problem. When the battery cable is disconnected in order to attach an ammeter, a faulty component that is causing an intermittent drain may not reactivate when the meter is connected. With the parasitic draw test switch installed between the battery negative terminal and the negative cable, turn the switch on before the engine is started. Also, never turn the switch off while the engine is running. Otherwise, the car's electrical system could be damaged. With the parasitic draw test switch in place, road test the car and activate all electrical accessories. After the road test, turn the ignition to lock and remove the key. If the car is equipped with traction control or electronic level control, allow at least seven minutes for these systems to time out. The electronic level control system may operate and draw 14 amps after key off, and the high current could damage your ammeter. Set a DVOM on the 10 amp scale and connect it to the parasitic draw test switch terminals. With the doors shut and all lights and accessories off, turn the parasitic draw test switch off and observe the DVOM reading as current flows through the ammeter. When the reading drops to two amps or less, turn the test switch on to maintain continuity and set the DVOM to the two amp scale for a more accurate measurement. Then turn the test switch off again and observe current draw on the lower scale. If current draw is over 35 milliamps, continue the drain test by removing the fuses one at a time and watching for current drop to identify the circuit containing the high draw. Remember to turn the draw test switch on to maintain continuity before removing each fuse. A total parasitic draw of 35 milliamps or less is normal. The charging system should be tested to find the cause of the battery discharge. When a car is to be stored for an extended period of say 25 to 30 days, disconnect the negative battery cable 
to prevent normal parasitic loads from completely draining the battery. When disconnecting the cable is not practical, the battery should be protected by charging every 20 to 45 days. The electrolyte in a charged battery acts as an antifreeze. When a flat battery is exposed to cold weather conditions, the weak electrolyte may freeze and ruin the battery. Normal parasitic loads, small though they are, eventually drain the battery in a stored car to a very low state of charge. This can lead to embarrassing situations, and matters could get worse. When a car with a flat battery is jump-started, then driven for a short distance, it's almost certain that it will fail to restart. A car with a dead battery can instantly destroy a customer's confidence in the car and the dealership. And that's just too high a price to pay for neglect of a simple maintenance item. So it's very important that discharged batteries are identified and charged. With proper care during the testing and charging process, you'll find most discharged Freedom batteries can be restored to a useful state. The